about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Please listen to my message, The Secret Place. I preach it right here in House on the Rock. Please get it and listen to it. But there is speed that is coming to your life. When you pray for you and something will happen to you now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Speed in life and ministry. Take that grace. You will never be the same. Speed from today, no more delay in your destiny. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. Someone lift your voice in one minute and begin to declare upon your life. Lord, I will never be the same. Someone please pray. Please pray. someone pray that man there two of you come stand are you preachers you're men of god lift your hands in the name of jesus take that grace new dimensions in the spirit you will never be the same never be the same i release you new wells of power new wells of grace by the spirit of the living god may your churches be on fire for jesus may your churches be on fire healings miracles signs wonders salvation in the name of jesus christ hallelujah you'll be seated shortly please you know sometimes we do these things by the spirit this soul please come and stand what's your name sir who is joseph what's your name joseph Are you a pastor? You are a pastor. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Take that grace. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Everything that has held your destiny down, except God is not God. In this conference, I stand by the God of my covenant and I declare, Sheke Pakatosiata. Whatever will not let you go must go for your sake this night. Hear me. I speak to you by the God of the heavens. Help them please. Help them. Whatever will not let you go must give way. Open your mouth in one minute and declare. This is a season of liberty. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Is a preacher praying. Is a businessman praying. Is a family person praying. Hallelujah. Please be seated if you can. I want to teach for a few minutes now. We'll walk with the time, but I want you to be sensitive because whilst I'm teaching, the Lord is touching people the lord is healing the sick the lord is bringing restoration to men and women praise the name of the lord now let's discuss encounters very quickly job chapter 42 please help them help them just keep them maybe on their seats or somewhere job chapter 42 and verse 5 let's get to scripture now job chapter 42 and verse 5 
If you can see it projected, please read with me. Ready? One to read. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. I heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now you have brought me into a realm of encounter. In Exodus chapter 3, the Bible tells us that Moses, having run away from Egypt after killing one of the Egyptians, he was banished and he ran away. The Bible says he was tending his father-in-law's sheep, Jethro. Are we together? Then the Bible says that Moses saw a scenery that caught his attention. He said he saw a bush that was bunny and yet not consumed. It was God luring Moses into an experience that would prepare him to advocate the exodus of God's people. Then the Bible says, Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. And when God saw that he turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes for where thou standest is holy ground. And then through a series of other encounters, he revealed himself as I am to Moses. He said, now on the strength of this encounter, go to your half-brother Ramesses, who is now the Pharaoh of Egypt, and tell him, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, the one you met in the wilderness, let my people go. When he went and met Ramesses, who was now the Pharaoh of Egypt, after communicating all that, you would think that Pharaoh would say, wow, Moses, okay, go. He refused. And he said, who is this one that sent you? And Moses threw his rod as a token of that encounter. And Pharaoh laughed. He said, you are bringing this childish manifestation to Egypt, the center of wizardry. Janus, Jambes, come, show this man that this is Egypt. They threw their rods and they also became serpents. To cut the long story short, on the strength of that encounter, it got to a point where the firstborn of Pharaoh died and he had to release the people of God. Gave them gold, gave them silver, did not even allow their bread to rise and he sent them with the outstretched arm of God. Your exploits in this kingdom, I will repeat myself, is predicated on your encounters. But there are four levels of encounters. Let me run through them very quickly. And the order of those encounters also matter. I'm going to be communicating them according to the order. Number one, very quickly. The first encounter that any man and any woman who desire to be used by God would have to go through is an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. Write it down, please. No matter what else you encounter, if you have not encountered Jesus, the son of the living God, you have not begun your journey in the faith life. This looks simple and this looks basic. But if we do not help people, we will have so many people in church, but very few people who are sincerely born again. The first encounter in this order is an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. Can I tell you this? Jesus is not just a prophet. Jesus is not just a wise sayer. Jesus is not just a spiritual leader. If you define Jesus by those terms, you do not know him. Who do men say that I, the son of man, is? And some said, you are Elijah. Some said, you are one of the prophets. He said, but you, what is your verdict about my person? And Peter, speaking by the Spirit, said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. That means the revelation of the sonship of Jesus has to come from the Father. Listen very carefully. It is not enough to believe in Jesus. What you believe about him also matters. There are people who believe in Jesus as a prophet. There are people who believe in Jesus as one of those revered leaders. The Bible tells us, and from the authority of scripture we stand, that Jesus is the son of the living God. It is important to understand 
He is not an archangel. He is not one of the angels. He is not just a spiritual being. Jesus himself. The Bible calls him the, the express image of the invisible God. The revelation of the Father to us. Jesus. If you do not encounter Jesus, you can still be in church. You can write books. You can even be a man of God. But I assure you by the authority of scripture, you are not saved. For my Bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. You don't give your life to the Holy Spirit. You don't give your life to an angel. No, the the administrator of the life of God, the advocate, the mediator is Jesus, the son of the living God. Please shout that name. Say Jesus. An encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. There are three blessings that follow this encounter very quickly. If you truly encounter Jesus, the son of the living God, there are three blessings. Number one is access to the life of God. This is the first blessing. John chapter 3 and verse 16. A popular scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten. But now he's not his one and only begotten. Today he's the firstborn of we the begotten. Are we together? He says he gave his one and only begotten. That whosoever believes in him, no prejudice, no sentiments, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The word everlasting is not a very accurate translation of the Greek word zoe. The Greek word zoe does not just mean life without end. For in reality, everybody has everlasting life. Is that true? When you die in this physical realm, you do not cease to exist. The issue is location, not continuity of living. Those in hell are still alive. Lazarus and the rich man. Even when they both left the earth realm. So the life Jesus came to give us is not just everlasting. It's a quality of life. God's own life, not just the God kind of life. It is not the kind. It is the very life of God. Apostle John said, this is the record that God has given us the way eternal life. He said, but he designed the administration of that life such that that life comes through an encounter with his son. So that he that had the son had eternal life. So I know that you have the life of God by verifying whether you have met the son. If you have not met the son, you may have another kind of life. But it is not God's life. The first blessing of an encounter with the son of the living God is access to the life of God. Number two. The second blessing is access to righteousness. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Righteousness is the nature of God. It is very powerful. Righteousness is one of the things that man lost through the fall. Men like E.W. Kenyon would define righteousness as the ability to stand before the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, inferiority, and condemnation. But it's more than that. Righteousness is the very nature of God. Are we together now? Yes. When you are justified by faith, you have access to righteousness. It is righteousness that qualifies you to now be a partaker of that divine life. Because the condition to be a carrier of God's life is that you must have righteousness equal to that of Jesus. So he administers his righteousness. Justification by faith, the Bible says. Here's how the Bible puts it. It says, Christ has delivered us, redeemed us from the cause of the law. Being made a cause for us, for it is written in the Mosaic law, Cost is every man that hangs upon the tree. Why? That the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham is not cars and houses. No. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. May come upon all those who believe. 
to the end that them be justified now might receive the promise of the spirit through faith access to righteousness the blessedness of encountering the son of god and then the third blessing very quickly is access to what we call grace ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 a concept that has been so talked about but rarely understood access to grace what is grace is more than just unmerited favor Ephesians chapter 1 please and verse 3 this is the definition of grace blessed be God and the father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us the Bible says with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places the grace of God is defined as every spiritual blessing every possibility that is contained in God given to the saints only through the office of Christ this is called grace so the power of God is grace. The wisdom of God is grace. Speed is grace. Are we together now? The ability of the spirit is grace. Every spiritual possibility that is contained in God and released to the saints only through the office of the Christ is called grace. It's beyond that which is received as new birth. No. Grace is like the spiritual warehouse that contains all the possibilities that are in God. But the authorized channel for access is Christ. Are we together? So when you encounter the Son of God, you have access to His life, you have access to righteousness, you have access to grace. In fact, let me add one more. One more that is so needed in our world today. You have access to what the Bible calls the peace of God. Write it down. This is what money cannot buy. This is what education cannot provide. Listen very carefully. This is what wealth and fame and human achievements cannot provide. In fact, one of the dividing, the clearest proof that you have met Jesus is the peace of God. He said, peace I give you. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives. Peace. A state of restfulness even in the midst of storms you are happy for reasons that men cannot understand let me tell you this if you have not experienced the peace of God in your life depression will weigh you down to death we live in a society today where people both young and old are adopting all kinds of diseases and infirmities teenagers are carrying high blood pressure because we have not learned the power of the peace of God. It is the peace of God that grants you grace to sit in the midst of plenty or little and still be happy. Not defined by the things around you. The peace of God. That someone tells you your car was just stolen. And you say, wow, that's not good. But not enough to hang yourself. Uh -uh. The peace of God. This generation needs to understand once again the power of the peace of God. The most accurate definition of wealth is peace. No matter what you have, if you do not have the peace that comes with it, you are really not blessed. We are just on point one. An encounter with the Son of God. That you get to that point where like the Apostle Paul, you have made peace with God and you have the peace of God. Peace with God means that you know that you are one with him. Both in this life and after this life. You no longer are afraid of death because you have peace with God. But then you have the peace of God in your heart that shields you from the vicissitudes of life. So you laugh at storms, not out of a sense of irresponsibility. But you are unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life. I believe in the peace of God. I truly believe in the peace of God. Please hear me. The Lord is speaking to someone. The way you are living your life, you are going to be depressed to death. You need to embrace the peace of God tonight. The peace of God does not get you saved. No. No. 
Having a Christian name does not get you saved. Participating in church activity does not get you saved. The formula is in Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 and 10. The Bible says the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of faith that we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy heart, with your mouth and then with your heart, the Lord Jesus, verse 9 says, it says, you shall be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Somewhere before the end of this program, I'm going to make an altar call today. And there are many of you, the Lord is already speaking to you sincerely. You may be a sincere person, very well-meaning, but you truly need an encounter with Jesus. Can I touch on one more encounter for tonight? Number two, the second encounter that you need is an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Write it down. We need this dimension of encounter in the middle belt. It is, it is, it is an encounter that is needed not just in Plateau State alone. The needle belt so desperately needs an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Please look up. This is not about Pentecostalism at all. Please do not confuse what I'm teaching here. This is not some, some, some manifestation of irresponsible people. I'm talking about the genuine encounter because many have mocked the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We have ignored his ministry. So even though we have preserved morality, we continue to labor in the flesh to achieve things that only God worked as an ordinary man for 30 years until the heavens were opened over him. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the similitude of a dove. That became the beginning of his supernatural ministry. The first revelation of God in the Bible, the Godhead that was revealed in the Bible that we see operating was the Holy Spirit. Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, Now the earth was dark and void and formless. Is a Hebrew word, tohu abohu, confusion and chaos. And then the Bible says, And the Spirit of God, hovered around the face of the waters. This is my Bible. There was no man in scripture from Genesis to Revelation, not even Jesus himself, who was able to satisfy the Father's desire outside of the participation of the Holy Spirit. Here's how Paul puts it, speaking to the church in Corinth. He said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We recite it after every service. But now you hear it from the spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said the love of God. And the fellowship. It's the word koinonia. The sharing together. The participation of the Holy Ghost. He says let it be with you. Let it abide with you. The Holy Ghost. Is the one who can turn ordinary men into signs and wonders. John chapter 14 from verse 16 to 18. Jesus himself is teaching now. John 14 from verse 16 please. He began to introduce them to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. They had seen his invincible life. This son of a carpenter had now become a sign and a wonder. Healing the sick, raising the dead, multiplying bread. This man became invincible, single-handedly. He was responsible for the exploits of ordinary men. Here in Joss, there were mighty men and women who were raised. Ordinary people. Some of them were not educated. Some of them did not have any enlightenment. But they stumbled across this strange personality of the Holy Spirit. Until today, we continue to talk of their exploits, even upon the plateau. They left prophetic words before they went to be with the Lord. 
by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We talk in Nigeria about men like Archbishop Benson Idahosa. We talk about men and women like Apostle Babalola. We talk of men and women who did mighty and terrible things. Those men confessed themselves that they were powerless except for the Holy Spirit. You read about God's generals, Catherine Kuhlman, Amphi Semple McPherson, William Seymour, the white eye evangelist that turned their cities upside down. These men and women were ordinary people. Maria Woodward Eater. Very ordinary. And yet they met the Holy Spirit. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? The Holy Spirit is not wind. The Holy Spirit is not anointing oil. The Holy Spirit is not some church emblem. He is a real personality that by faith and hunger, you can step into a dimension of relationship with him whose benefit can be proven in your lifetime. The Holy Spirit is not a preacher's advocacy. No. Hear me, Plato. The Holy Spirit is not for men of God. The Holy Spirit is for those in government. The Holy Spirit is for career people. The Holy Spirit is for family people. Don't ignore him. Jesus did not ignore him. When God sends you, Isaiah 48 and verse 16, he never sends you alone. Let me give someone a word of hope as we prepare to pray. When he sends you, he never sends you alone. The B part of this verse says, it says the Lord God and his spirit had sent me. The Lord and his spirit had sent me. Just because you cannot see him does not mean he is not real. The only way to understand the Holy Spirit is to understand marriage. When two people are about to get married, a gentleman and a lady, they ask them questions. Will you take this one? They don't even listen to what they are saying. They just say yes so that they finish the meeting. And the meaning of that is that there is a covenant that binds them. Watch what happens. That as soon as that lady becomes married to that man, she no longer bears her son name. She's under the influence of that man. Now watch this. Even if she were a cleaner and she marries a CEO, she becomes a CEO's wife immediately, not later. What you think or don't think is irrelevant. Are we together now? Let's say a billionaire or a millionaire is in this place and the wife just walks up here and says, I donate one billion. Whether she discussed with her husband or not is their issue to settle at home. As far as we are concerned, the journalist will narrate it this way. His eminence or his excellency or his whatever, represented through his able wife, donated one billion. Is that true? That means the wife never went alone. She went and carried his name. She carried his reputation with her. And even though he may not like what she did, he has to defend his reputation because he's her husband. It will be irresponsible of him to leave his wife. Listen to me. Are you understanding what I'm telling you now? So she's now called Mrs. His name. And on the strength of that, she can make decrees. She may not have up to a million naira in her account. Yet she will make decrees that are bigger than her size, trusting his reputation to defend it. Hear me? This is what happens with our ministry with the Holy Spirit. We are ordinary people in ourselves, but you are that bride. There is a faithful husband that backs you. Man of God, don't go to that crusade ground alone. You will be disappointed. There is a betrothal. There is a marriage that has happened. When you speak, you don't speak alone. When you cast out devils, they obey because the jealousy of your husband is defending your statement. Hear me? 
The secret behind the mysterious results that we produce. Make no mistakes about it. It is not the strength of the flesh. Jesus came to Nicodemus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. There are results that are not within the realm of man. You cannot produce such a result. So when I stand here, I am a man in the physical, but I am a bride in the spirit. There is a jealous husband. Walk with that consciousness and you will step into a life of signs and of wonders. Walk there as a career person. Walk there as a commissioner. Walk there as a governor. You are not just sitting down and writing. Spirit of the living God. Your namesake is at stake here. I receive wisdom. I receive guidance. How dare you look at someone on a wheelchair and tell him to stand up. By what strength? How dare you look at a destiny that has been tied for ages, sometimes before you were born, and dare to announce in a moment, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's the secret. Because he had anointed. The word anointed means ordained. He has legitimized my operations. Joss, you are not weak. You are only weak when you are alone. Plato state. You are not weak. Africa, it is not the color of our skin. It is not our educational limitation. It is our, res our resisting and neglecting the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hear me, Plato. My life is proof as an inspiration that if the Holy Ghost holds your hands, he will take you to the nations. He will defy all the laws of men. Is God blessing someone? Someone come, any come gentlemen. Watch this. This is me walking alone through life, confused. I come here and they say you are not this tribe. I come here and they say you are an African. I'm so limited. And then I come and hold his hands, the Holy Ghost. I hold his hands and go back to that same business. I hold his hands and go to ministry. While I'm preaching, he's with me. You are just not seeing him. So when I say in the name of Jesus, blind eyes open. It's not just my mouth. There is the jealousy of the spirit. His assignment is to see that Christ is glorified in your life. And he will shift anything to make sure that Christ is glorified. Let the weight of your glory Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us. Let the ways of your glory fall. Listen to me. Dear man of God, you may have eloquence and oratory. But if you do not have the spirit of God, you will still be disappointed. Dear civil servant, you may have your certificate and your training. But if you do not have the Holy Spirit, you are bound to have a plethora of frustrations. Dear family man, you may be a responsible husband and a father. But life requires more than that. Even demons know. There are certain results that the moment you see it, it's a revelation that that man is not alone. Occultists know this. Non-Christians know this. You cannot produce results beyond a certain threshold except God is with you. I was stupid enough to hold his hands and say, Holy Spirit, I may not have what it takes. I may not be an American, respectfully speaking. I may not be a European. I may not conform to the standards that men have put, but I'm ready to hold your hands. Someone God is speaking to you. You need to take the Holy Ghost serious. You've been having board meetings on church growth. 
Board meetings on increase. Thank God for those things. But nothing will replace the power that his presence brings. You can fake power. You can't fake his presence. The reality of the Holy Spirit. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? He changed my life. When I met the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God can take you from anywhere to anywhere. From anything to anything. Don't give me the excuse of your background. Believe me. Don't give me the excuse of tribal sentiments. Not when the Holy Ghost. If it is the genuine Holy Spirit. He will turn your life into a sign and a wonder. This is not a preacher's talk. He will bring beauty and glory out of your life. You will walk in dimensions of extraordinary results. Just when men think they have exhausted all that can come from you, then he comes with another dimension. You will never be able to do ministry without the Holy Spirit. Plato said it will take more than formulating policies in addition to that which the members of parliament are involved with. Hear me. I speak to you by the Spirit of the Lord. As a territory, we need to one more time say, Maranatha, come. Spirit of the living God, come. Beyond the Pentecostal phenomenon, come. Come to our government. Come to our members of parliament. Come to the business people. Come to members. Come to preachers. When he comes, he brings guidance. When he comes, he brings direction. When he comes, he brings empowerment. I have many things to tell you now, Jesus said, but ye cannot bear them. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? He says he will guide you. He will guide you. He will take up that which is of me and he will give it unto you. The Holy Ghost is responsible for the signs and the wonders that you see. The Holy Ghost is responsible for kingdom influence. You can be as true and as right as you are, but except the power of the Holy Ghost is upon you, you may not do much in this kingdom. For the race is not to the swift, the Bible declares. The battle is not for the song. I learned the excellency of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and I forever hold his hands. My life is useless without him. He is a factor. That one factor. Bringing you into a dimension of spiritual reality. Please listen to me. We need to embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is the extraordinary factor in a man's life God making ordinary men to become supernatural let the Holy Spirit be involved in your business and you will be surprised what will come out of your life let the Holy Spirit be involved in your ministry believe me I know what I'm saying let the Holy Spirit be involved in your family and you will marvel and wonder at the superior dimensions that his presence can bring in one minute, wherever you are, I'd like you to pray and say, Holy Spirit, I need you afresh. I need you afresh. Let it be a genuine prayer. Are you praying? Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you